Now if I had a nickel for every time that I bought a fountain pen, which looked like a Lamy 2000, which then turned out not to be one, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't exactly a lot, but it's kind of weird that it's happened twice. Although that is nothing compared to the number of fake Lamy Safaris which I own. If I had a nickel for every time I bought one of those, I'd be a pretty rich man. Now the first time which I bought a Lamy 2000 clone was with the Keiko Edge. Obviously it's not a perfect clone, there are quite a few differences, including the clip, which didn't work, the grip and section, which were very different, and the nib. Plus it's a cartridge converter, whereas the Lamy 2000 has an internal piston. Although importantly, what was the same, and the reason why I bought it in the first place, was the body. Or at least the plastic. It was made from brushed macrolon, which the Lamy 2000 is famous for being made from. And if you've never used a fountain pen that's made from brushed macrolon, you're certainly missing out. It's easily one of my favourite materials to make a fountain pen from, because it has a nice warm feel, coupled with the fact that it handles oils really well. So you can use this fountain pen for long periods of writing, and it's not going to get slippery. Unfortunately though, as much as I like the fountain pen, it did suffer from a big problem, and that was the fact that the capping insert was simply pressed into place, and it had a really strong spring, so every time you tried to cap it, you would effectively push that insert further into the cap. And before long, it would start to crack. And that's a real shame because I really liked that fountain pen. It had a good nib, it was very comfortable to write with, it just suffered from the fact that the cap would split. So I guess let's go ahead and see how well Jin Hao can do with their Lamy 2000 clone. And you know, right off the bat, I do trust Jin Hao to do this properly, more so than Keiko. It's a little bit hard to trust Chinese fountain pen brands because there's always going to be some question about quality control, but Jin Hao have been doing this probably the longest out of all the main ones that you see today. And Jin Hao, at least with the pens that I've been getting recently, their quality control is a lot better than it used to be. So I guess there is a lot riding on Jin Hao to have done this correctly. And you know what? Just at least looking at it from a distance, you can definitely say that this is a Lamy 2000. Definitely more 2000 than the Keiko ever was because the clip is correct. But if you know your Lamy 2000s or you put it right up next to one, you'll probably start to see the differences. You know, there's no engraving on the clip. There's no little parting line for the internal plunger. And the material, I don't know, it does look a little bit off. It's obviously brushed, but you can tell that it's not Macalon. However, once you take off the cap, I mean, any notion that this was a Lamy 2000 quickly evaporates because, you know, the differences are pretty apparent. There's no ink window like you'd see on a 2000. The grip section is different and the nib, I mean, the nib is a normal Lamy style nib, which you'd see on the Safari, the CP1, rather than a 14 karat gold hooded nib, which you'd find on the Lamy 2000. Plus the nib says Jin Hao on it, so that is probably a good giveaway that it's not a Lamy. So I guess like the Keiko Edge, it borrows pretty much all the styling cues from the Lamy 2000, for most people to call it a Lamy 2000, although there are enough differences for this to be more a clone rather than a direct copy or a fake. Although with that said, I do think everyone is a little bit wrong to be comparing this directly to a Lamy 2000, and I'll tell you why at the end, but first I want to talk about the pen sort of by itself, forgetting the fact that it is a Lamy clone, because I think as a fountain pen, or at least the body anyway, it is a really good fountain pen by itself. And I'll go as far to say that this is probably the best fountain pen that I've bought from China in a good long while. Yes, I've bought a lot less than I have done in the past, but this one here, by itself, it is a really good fountain pen. Now, the price that I paid for this was about 10 bucks. That's about double compared to what most Jin Hao's used to cost, but I think 10 bucks for what is arguably a really good fountain pen is still a fair price. Plus, it also comes with a converter, which most Lamy pens don't. Now in typical Jin Hao fashion, they offer this pen in a million different colours and trim options, which is more that can be said for what Lamy offer. I'm pretty sure at the moment, it's only two colours. So I took full advantage of that and I got this in the dark blue with gold trim. And I don't know about you, but it looks a lot better with this colour scheme. Apart from that though, I can't exactly say anything else about the aesthetics because it's essentially a Lamy 2000, which is a fountain pen I like the look of. 
Although with that said, they haven't kept with the Lamy tradition of using Macrolon in this pen. It definitely feels a lot closer to most of the other Jinhao fountain pens which they make, at least in terms of the plastic, although they have kept the brushed finish. It's not an actual brushed finish, it's just molded in. You can see the parting lines, but you can still feel the brushed finish and I gotta say it feels just as good as a Lamy 2000 would feel or as good as the Keiko Edge. I mean, just having the brush texture means that it handles oily, sweaty fingers a lot better than pretty much every other fountain pen. You know, this is a really underrated and underused texture, and I don't know why, because it works so well. Although on the flip side, when you hold it, it does feel a little bit cheap in the way that the Keiko Wedge didn't. Now again, this is also going to be difficult to credit Jinhao with anything because it's obviously just a Lamy 2000, but the ergonomics of this fountain pen are just as good as the Lamy 2000, which by itself is a really ergonomic pen. I mean, there's no thread section, you know, it's just one constant curve. So you can hold this pen pretty much anywhere using pretty much any grip style and it is gonna be really, really comfortable to use. I mean, I can write with this pen for 10, 12 pages, which is what I did when I was writing the script for this video and it's really comfortable and you can write for long periods of time without any issues. Honestly, if you like lighter fountain pens, the ergonomics probably don't get any better than this. You know, it's only about 20 grams, so it's quite light, but it's very comfortable to use. Now, I don't generally use this pen posted because I find the clip to be a little bit back heavy, so I write with it unposted, so it's a little bit lighter, but either way, still very comfortable to write with. Now, the big improvement with this fountain pen over, say, the Keiko Edge is going to be found mostly at the cap. For one, the clip works, which I guess isn't exactly a high bar, but the Keiko set the bar pretty low with a clip that didn't work. More importantly though, it relies on a totally different capping mechanism, one that A, doesn't have a very heavy spring in it, and is also butted at the very end of the cap. So whilst I'm not sure if it's glued or not, it's not gonna cause the pen to crack. Now the threads for the barrel, they feel pretty good. It's plated steel on both ends and the back piece is pressed and I assume glued into the back, which is usually pretty good because it's going to be quite strong and metal on metal threads will be a lot more durable than say plastic on metal. Although it doesn't mean that you can't eye drop this fountain pen, which is something that I would have liked the option to do, but it's not a big deal breaker. You know, the converter that comes as standard, it holds a good amount of ink, so that should be okay especially if you use these stock nibs, which are either a fine or an extra fine. And speaking of which, let's talk about the nib. Now, this is the first time which I've used a Lamy style folded nib on a Jinhao pen. Obviously, I've used these folded nibs before. I've used them, in fact, most Wingsung pens used to come with this type of nib. I have a Lamy Safari, so I'm very familiar with them. But this is the first time that I bought a Jinhao fountain pen with this style of nib. And on the whole, the stock nib is, it's okay. You know, these nibs always have a certain feel and style, which is mostly down to their shape and design. You know, they're good writing pens, but you don't usually get much flex or line variation from them. But if you need to crank out, say, 10 pages, these are pretty good nibs. And that's pretty much the case whether you're dealing with a genuine Lamy nib or a knockoff nib such as this. You know, this one here is pretty stiff and you don't get a whole lot of line variation either in trying to flex the pen or in the grind itself. It's not hugely scratchy, but there's certainly a good amount of feedback in the sense that it's not buttery smooth and there's a bit of grip or bite to the nib itself. Outside of that, I found this pen to be quite reliable. You know, it never skipped and it never dry started. And because the feed runs on the dry side, you can use this on cheaper uncoated paper, which is what I normally use. Obviously, it must be said, you know, your results may vary because we're still dealing with Chinese quality control. But like I said before, Jinhao's quality control seems to be a lot better than it used to be. One thing that hasn't changed, though, is the fact that they only offer this fountain pen with an extra fine or a fine nib. So if you like fine or extra fine nibs, or you tend to write on the smaller side, this is probably going to be an okay nib. You may want to run it over just a little bit of micro mesh just to make it a little bit smoother. But on the whole, it's okay. But if, like me, you prefer, say, a medium nib, you'll probably be pretty unimpressed with this pen. Now, at that point, my opinion on the fountain pen, and my opinion still stands with the fountain pen in its stock condition, would be maybe a 6 or a 7 out of 10. You know, great ergonomics, but the nib is a little bit disappointing. The nib could be a bit more polished, and it could be a little bit bigger. 
But because the nib and the feed are pretty much identical to that of a genuine Lamy pen, you can simply swap the nib out for a genuine Lamy nib, which is exactly what I ended up doing. I have a really good example of a Lamy medium nib. You know, it is buttery smooth. It's really great to write with. And once I put that nib on this pen, it was like flicking on a light switch. I mean, it was nice and day. Uh, and my opinion of this pen went from maybe a six or a seven out of 10 to instantly being probably my favorite fountain pen that I've used in a long time. Look, I don't normally nib swap pens for a review because I like to keep the pens as stock as possible, but I couldn't make a review and not talk about this fountain pen with a Lamy nib and not say just how good of a pen it is because it is essentially everything that I would want from an everyday writer. You know, it certainly looks the part, it has great ergonomics, it has a great nib, and even with a real genuine Lamy nib, it's not all that expensive either. You know, this is a $10 fountain pen, you can get a Lamy nib for about 30 bucks, all up, this is a $40 fountain pen. And the great thing is, you don't have to feel too bad about this being a Lamy clone because, you know, Lamy still got their money. You're using a genuine made in Germany Lamy nib. And for what it's worth, even an extra fine or a fine Lamy nib is going to be a lot better than the stock nib that you'd find on this fountain pen. So even if you like a finer nib, I'd still swap it anyway. And it's at this point which I'll cycle all the way to the beginning of the video where I said it may not be the most appropriate or proper thing to compare this to a Lamy 2000. Obviously, the comparison is really easy because, I mean, it looks like a Lamy 2000, but it has the nib of a Lamy Safari, a Lamy All-Star, a CP1, you know, a Studio. The writing experience is a lot closer to those fountain pens. And in terms of price brackets, it is a lot closer to the Lamy Safari. A Lamy Safari in Australia is about 50 bucks these days, and this with a Lamy nib is about 40. And at least to me, the Jinhao 80 without a cap holds and feels very similar to the Lamy Studio. In a roundabout sort of way, what I'm trying to say is I wish Lamy would make this fountain pen. You know, if they made this charged 50, 60, or even $70, I'd buy it. You know, it doesn't have to be made from Macrolon. You can make from ABS like the Lamy Safari is made from. Simply brush it like they do it here and I would buy it because this is essentially my perfect fountain pen. And the fact that I have to buy a clone and then nib swapper to get this sort of ergonomics is a little bit frustrating because I want to support Lamy. I want to support German made pens. It's just unfortunate that they don't make a pen or a pen like this. And at least to me, Lamy is one of the most frustrating companies when it comes to their pen designs because at least for normal writing, I do like their nibs, but their pen designs are, they are frustrating because, you know, say what you want about $50 for a Lamy Safari, but the big thing boils down to the fact that I don't love their ergonomic grip. I don't hate it as much as I used to, but if you could offer me a pen that had it and a pen that didn't have it, I would take the pen that didn't have it 10 times out of 10. And I hate the fact that they don't have a budget mainstream model that doesn't feature this grip because the All-Star also has this grip and they don't sell a Safari model that doesn't have it. In fact, if they had a Safari model which didn't have that grip, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. So with the Safari and the All-Star knocked out, what else do we have? I have the Lamy CP1, for example, which is a more normal shaped pen, but that pen costs $150 and it comes with the exact same $30 nib, which is found on the Lamy Safari. And having used that pen in store, I don't think that that pen, or at least the body, is worth $120. There's also the Lamy Studio, which I mentioned earlier, and that fountain pen is incredibly comfortable to use. But once again, it's $150 and at least to me, the body doesn't justify it being worth the actual $120. I don't know, it just feels a bit frustrating that Lamy doesn't make, say, a 50, 60, 70, or even $80 pen with just normal ergonomics. I just wish they'd make this. And in a certain sense, they did. You know, they made something called the Lamy 80, which sort of gives you the idea of how they came up with the Jinhao 80 name. And if you look at photos of it, it looks really similar to this fountain pen. Unfortunately, you can't buy that fountain pen. You know, Lamy haven't made it for about 40 years, but if Lamy did make it and they priced it, you know, in the $100 range, I would buy it in a heartbeat. So 
So in the end, I think the review got a little bit off track, so let me try and sum it up very quickly. For $10, this is a really well-built fountain pen for the price, and it has the same great ergonomics that you would find on the Lamy 2000. But obviously, don't compare it to a Lamy 2000. You know, there is no comparison. The Lamy 2000 is a three $400 fountain pen with a 14 karat gold nib. It's made in Germany. This one here, you know, it's 10 bucks. It's made in China. The stock nib is okay, you know, it's not going to blow you away, but if you want a fine or an extra fine nib, the nib should be at least adequate. And if I'd left it with the stock nib, this would just be another, you know, relatively good, cheap Chinese fountain pen. But this with a nib swap for a proper Lamy nib transforms the pen like that. I mean, it is like day and night. It goes from being an adequate fountain pen to being one of the best everyday writing fountain pens that I currently own. It looks nicer than a Lamy Safari, although that's not that difficult to do. But more importantly, at least to me, it is so much more comfortable than a Lamy Safari. And at roughly the same price, I mean, why wouldn't you go with this? Lamy, I know you're not watching, but this is the fountain pen which you should be making. You know, your regular run-of-the-mill nib with the Lamy 2000's amazing ergonomics. You know, for everyday writing, this is easily the only fountain pen that you would need. So yeah, that's about it. So I'll get into... So yeah, that's about it. Let's get into the writing sample, and uh, so that is the Jinhao 80. I'll get into a writing sample with both the stock and the Lamy nib. All right, welcome to the writing sample. This is the Jinhao number 80 with the stock nib. So, Jinhao 80. With the stock fine nib. Now the ink that I'm using is standard, you know, Parker Quink, which is probably the most used ink that I've ever used. It's a little bit boring, but it is an ink that seems to work in most fountain pens. So, writing sample. And as you can probably see, no dramas whatsoever with the writing sample. It's a pretty good nib. You know, there's a little bit of feedback, but they've done a pretty good job. The line is sort of what you'd expect from a Chinese fine nib, a little bit finer than what you might find on a proper fine Lamy nib. But overall, it's a pretty good nib. Fast writing. And as you can see there, it's mostly drama free, but when it has this fine nib, in some sections, it is starting to struggle a little bit. So as you can see on the upturn, there was a bit, it did go a bit dry for a little bit. Um, right around here, it was a little bit dry. And the bottom part of the F here. But overall, I mean, unless I'm pointing it out to you, it doesn't matter a whole lot. Although my fast writing is not as fast as other people's fast writing. So if you're a really fast writer, you would probably want to avoid this. Now in terms of natural line variation, that's it with no pressure. That's it with no pressure and I'll slowly start to increase the pressure. And you know, whilst there might be a tiny, tiny little bit of line variation, Overall, this is not the nib that you want if you're trying to get, you know, nice fancy writing with, you know, line variation. Now in terms of side to side and downstroke experience, the downstrokes might be a little bit thicker than the side strokes, but overall, you're not gonna notice it in everyday writing. Now in terms of the feed, especially with the fine nib, it is pretty dry. Now in terms of reverse writing, it actually reverse writes pretty well, which is a trait that seems to be quite common with Chinese fountain pens. All 
Overall, pretty uneventful, this nib. I mean, if you like fine writing nibs, and you just want this to jot down notes, or you have incredibly small handwriting, this would be an okay nib. But for me, it's a little bit small, and I don't know, I just want something a little bit nicer than this. So let me go ahead and swap over to the Lamy Medium nib, which is a nib that, even on the Lamy Safari, you know, a pen I don't love, it's a nib that I actually quite enjoy using. All right, welcome to part two of the writing sample with the Jin Hao 80. With a Lamy Medium nib. And the ink that I'm using is Parker Quink Black. Okay, so let's do a quick writing sample. And right off the bat, this is just a much better experience overall compared to having the stock nib. Like I said before, this is such a comfortable pen to use and I could do a million writing samples afterwards because I just want to keep using it and using it and using it. Um, in terms of the nib, I mean it is pretty much the stock Lamy experience and if you like Lamy nibs, which I do a lot more these days, you're going to get a pretty good experience. I mean, you're not getting too much flex from it, but it is buttery smooth, and it's just a very enjoyable writing experience. Obviously, this is the medium nib, so you would expect that. In terms of quick writing, And as you can see, it handles quick writing pretty well. The feed is certainly wet enough to keep up, although, you know, with Parker Quink, it's usually a pretty good ink that handles most pens quite well. Now, in terms of line variation, that's it with note. Ooh, look at that, that's a little bit of a skip. Wasn't really expecting that. But, no line variation, and now I'm starting to ramp up the pressure, and, Huh. Certainly doesn't like the pressure on the nib being turned up. I haven't put a whole lot of pressure on the nib before, so this is a bit of a surprise for me. But normally you don't, and it doesn't run into these problems, but there you go. Don't apply a whole lot of pressure to this nib because it'll start to skip. But in any event, you wouldn't want to do that anyway because there's not a whole lot of line variation to be had. Now in terms of natural line variation in the nib itself, Sideways, and and as you can see, there's very little, and as you can see, there's very little line variation in the grind of the nib by itself. And as a result, the writing that you get is going to be pretty, I don't know, I guess neutral. Not to say that it's a bad thing, though. You know, for everyday writing, you don't need to have you know fancy copper plate. Now, in terms of reverse writing. Oh God. It certainly doesn't reverse right as well as it does with the nib pointing the correct direction. It's fairly scratchy, although if you really wanted to, you could do it. Now in terms of ink flow, it's certainly on the dry side, but um, Which is sort of what you'd expect with a not, which is sort of what you'd expect for a Lamy style nib. Although with this nib, it certainly does tend to drink through ink quite a lot faster than I would expect. Overall, even though it did skip here, you know it doesn't normally do that, and I would wholeheartedly recommend this upgrade. You know the ergonomics of this pen tailored with this nib is just, 
It is a, an amazing pen, an amazing everyday writer, and a pen that I use pretty much all the time at the moment. Certainly a 10 out of 10 deal.